Here's the problem. I put out avocados, bread, all kinds of stuff, and the birds eschew me. It would be fun to have birds over for dinner. Um, I wonder what they would talk about. The fact that they don't like avocados and bread. Welcome to dinner party tonight. We're going to make an early spring dinner. Pretty early spring, but it's an early spring dinner. We're going to have some beautiful spiced monkfish on an apple vinaigrette, sort of an apple salad. We're going to have fancy AF potatoes. They are spectacular. For dessert, we're going to create an English trifle. What's a trifle? It has a lot of meanings, but in this case, it's a layered dessert that is essentially an assembly, okay? Anybody can make a trifle. You can make it with whatever you want. It's akin to Eaton Mess. Let's have a fabulous early spring dinner, and maybe the sparrows will deign to attend. A trifle is basically cookies or cake, fruit, cream, fruit, custard, cake, whipped cream, fruit. You usually serve it in a glass bowl so that people can see the layers, and it should set for the day in the fridge. But it doesn't have to set in the fridge. You can make this at the drop of a hat because you can go out and buy lady fingers or whatever cookies you like that are slightly soft, madeleines, whatever, and just put them in the bottom of your trifle bowl. And some people soak them with liquor. Trifles are usually slightly boozy, but uh, they don't have to be. So you don't have to make the cake. But I thought, why not make the cake? Because we can show you this kind of lovely traditional sponge cake recipe. What is a sponge cake? What's the difference between a sponge cake and a regular cake? On Great British Baking Show, you might have heard them refer to something called Victoria Sponge, which is sponge cake, whipped cream, strawberry sponge cake. It's a very, very common thing on the show. That cake has no fat except for the eggs. That's the difference. There's no butter. Essentially, that's the only difference. And you whip the living crap out of the eggs. But before you make your cake, you have to prepare your pan. The lady who wrote this recipe tells you to use a spring form. It's a great recipe, by the way. Thank you so much for putting it on the internet. If you don't have a spring form, you can use a regular pan. I made a couple practice ones. The best one came out of the spring form. I'm gonna go outside and spray my pan, because as you know, never spray your pan inside, because you'll be cleaning up spray for days and days. This is Everbake. Baker's Joy is the one that has flour in it. It's a pretty good product. This one was recommended by the incomparable King Arthur Baking, so I bought it because it was on their website. It's great. It's just vegetable oil. I've also taken a parchment that is covered in oil and placed it in the bottom, and I'm just gonna put a little oil on that. So your pan looks like this. Should be slippery on the side. Should be able to feel the prep of your pan. Uh, why do we prepare pans before we make the cake? Because ingredients in the cake can deflate, can chemically alter. If you stop when it's mixed to prepare your pan and heat your oven. I've done it, it does matter. Prepared pan. How do you make sponge? Well, it's really easy. You put five eggs and three quarters of a cup of sugar in here. I'm gonna use my new castor sugar from King Arthur Baking. What a deal. I've been buying from other companies, mistake. This is three pounds, a very, very reasonable price, okay? And it's great for baking. I'm gonna use five eggs, here we go. One, no need to separate. Two, three, four and see. Oh, isn't this fascinating? Five eggs. I'm gonna homogenize these before I put the sugar in. Three quarters of a cup of super fine. Boop. Don't be shy. Homogenize it for a second, meaning make it mix for one second. And then go nuts. This is gonna triple in size. This takes a little while. Okay, now, 
Look at how, how different this looks. And also, when I pick this up, it makes a thick ribbon. Now, what, what do I not want to do? I don't want to knock out all the air that I put into my sponge, right? That will be stupid. So I'm going to take a cup of flour and I'm going to sprinkle it over the top. So I'm going to go like this, all right? Very gentle. So you don't deflate your sponge and do not mix it with the, the mixing machine. You can use the mixing machine once just to move it around before you go to your spatula, this. I'm just gonna fold this in, but I'm not going like this. I'm stirring it gently. I'm finding little areas. I'm not deflating it. You can be gentle, but you don't wanna be so gentle that you have huge areas of uncooked flour. <laughs> now, don't be surprised if when you put it in the pan, you see flour, it's okay. You definitely use a pan with two inch size. This cake goes berserkowitz in the oven and it can easily overflow a low pan. I'm using one of these spoons to just even out the top, even though when it hits the heat, it'll even out. And I'm gonna bang the pan, but only a couple times. Okay, going to the oven. 350, about 30 minutes. Taking out my cake. Now they call this cake, it's like the, well, I'm calling it, it's like the friendly cake. It wants to make friends with all different flavors. Do not touch this thing until it is absolutely room temperature. I'm just severing some teeny little hookups that I'm seeing and I'm leaving it. And it will pull away from the sides all by itself. And um, it's very dainty and wants to be included in the party of flavors in your dessert. So I'm gonna make a very dainty, small trifle. You can use any well, trifle bowl, you can buy trifle bowls, which is basically a footed bowl, usually with a flat bottom. This conveniently does not have a flat bottom, which means it's not really the right bowl. But I thought it would be cute to make a small one. What do you need? You need a little bit of fruit, which I've used raspberries, strawberries, and blackberries, which I've lightly macerated, a little sugar and lemon juice and amaretto. I have custard, which I made without showing you because we made custard on the show. It's really ice cream base, but cooked a little longer, so it's quite thick. See that? It's pretty thick. Some cream that I'm gonna whip, some sponge cake that we made, and some amaretto. I'm just gonna quickly whip this cream. I put some Hylala vanilla seeds, the best vanilla, and a little bit of sugar. Pretty stiff. Piping bag, large nozzle piper. Pink. This is sponge cake. It's very light. I cut this into little teeny squares. I'm gonna put them in the bottom. This could be really good. Barely sprinkle them with amaretto. Just in pooty poo. So I'm gonna put some fruit in the middle and then I'm gonna put fruit carefully on the outside. How cute is this, you guys? Come on. Some custard, which is essentially pudding. I'm putting it in the middle so I don't mess up the outside. Remember, don't squeeze with both hands. This is the guide, this is the squeeze. If you squeeze with both hands, you're gonna run into a lot of problems. Some more cake in the trifle. It's a fun thing to make a trifle. More fruit in the trifle. This is awesome. Now I'm gonna let this run down the sides because I want a little bit of a yellow layer. I'm thrilled with this, by the way. Oops, ah, air pocket. Remember when they used to call uh, turbulence air pockets? When I was a kid, they, that's what they would say. Oh, we just hit an air pocket. I've been watching and listening to a new YouTube guy called 74 Gear. 
He's a 747 pilot, and he breaks down air traffic controller and uh, plane interactions, usually of an emergency or funny nature. Thank you, 74 gear guy. All right. Trifle. Don't stifle the trifle. It's delightful. Let's make fancy AF potatoes. These are fabulous. However, you have to prepare them the night before. You have to cook them the night before, and then you finish them on the day of your pate. What you're gonna do is take a bowl and pour into said bowl some cream. Like that. You're going to take some salt, quite a, quite a hefty amount of salt, and a little black pepper. Now you're gonna do this job called peeling potatoes. And literally, that's what you're gonna watch me do now. <laughs> so you can throw out your potato skins, or you can have a feeble, desperate hope that the birds might eat them, unless they eschew your offerings like my backyard birds do. I'm going to slice these on my mandolin. You need a thin slice. I'm gonna tell you right now, you can't do it by hand. It's too thin. I mean, unless you're Gordon Ramsay. I don't I mean, it's hard. You're gonna have your little container, and I'm making a small one. We have a Magic of Television one that's been pressed down overnight. I'm just gonna make an example here. You wanna line it with parchment paper. How do you make it fit? It doesn't fit. But what you wanna make sure is that once you've layered your potatoes, you can do this you can fold it over the potatoes. So for now, I'm just going to weight this down with the Parmesan, and I'm gonna start uh, doing our potatoes. Cut a flat surface. Check the potato. And start cutting. <laughs> I'm just checking the thickness. I doubt it's changed since last night. You wanna be able to see your finger through it. See my finger? Be careful with the mandolin. Remember this useless thing that came with your mandolin? The only thing it works for is potatoes. I think that's enough. Meanza clean love. So I'm simply rolling the potatoes in the seasoned cream. So here we go. I'm basically doing dauphinoise. I'm, I'm doing scalloped potatoes. You're supposed to butter the parchment paper before you put the potatoes in. Reggie! Reggie is going to very, very lightly salt this because there's salt in the cream. Reggie! We should, do, we should do like Fanny Craddock, yelling at the person. I would never do that. Yell at you. No. Yeah. I thought you meant pepper. No, don't! Don't put that! You know how she screams at the girl? It's so funny. Hello! Thank you. Sorry for that noise. Okay, I'm putting a little butter. Reggie's gonna hit it. Hit it, Reg. Yeah, we don't need a lot of salt because there's salt in the cheese and there's salt in the liquid. Butter layer. And the butter also helps the starch release and sticks the pie together. You're gonna die when you see it. It's pretty amazing when it comes out. All right. Thanks, Reg. So now what I'm doing is I'm making a nice packet. I don't have a lid that fits this. So I'm creating a lid out of tin foil, which they don't call it that anymore. And I'm gonna bake this. You know, a cook named Matt, who's a pretty serious cook. I'm gonna be showing you how to make the perfect potato gratin. He says a little longer than I would say. It's basically when you open it and a knife goes straight through. This size, maybe 45 minutes, an hour. And you're gonna see, after we cook this, we're gonna put a weight on it after it's cooled to room temperature, and we're gonna put it in the fridge, and a miracle is gonna happen. Tomorrow's just another day, little potatoes. 370 normal, 360 convection. You're just making dauphinoise. You're just baking them. And then just take a sharp knife and see if it'll go straight through. If you hit resistance, it's not ready. It's very simple. I think these are ready. So good. I'm just opening this carefully because of the grease. Pretty sure it's gonna go straight through. Yeah, okay. Now I'm gonna leave it to cool and you will see what happens later. 
These are the potatoes. They're still quite warm. So I can't, I can't really refrigerate them right now. So I'm gonna just kind of show you what I did with the magic of television ones. So you can see what we're going to do with these when they cool down. So these are the magic of television ones. This is the beautiful brick that David made me out of black marble. This weighs a ton. I mean, it's gotta be six pounds. And what I did was, because this is an inconvenient size, I put something in it with a wider top, but a small base, and I put the thing on top of it. So I'm probably gonna do the same thing here. Right now, if I did it, it would squadge out because it's still quite warm. I'm gonna do this, and then I'm gonna put this on top of it. And then it's gonna go in and become this miracle that you're about to witness. Oh yeah. Now it's not super delicate. Frankly, you could just eat this. I mean, it's divine, okay? But we're gonna take it one step further. So what I need is square edges. Excuse me. That's not even the good part. Now what you're gonna do is you're gonna cut the batons that go one per person. You can do this any shape you want. You can cut this in half and fry it and give people a huge piece. So here's the problem with doing this for Christmas, even though it's crazy delicious. It's an added thing at service. So if you have two people, like if it's yourself and your partner, your best friend, right? Somebody's job at service has to be frying these. Don't try to do your plating, your, your main and the, these potatoes. It, they're a little bit of a fussy girl, these potatoes. Monkfish, it's kind of like lobster. So we want to serve it with something bright and delightful. So we're going to make a little citrus salad, which is kind of like the one that Gordon made on the F word that inspired us to make this whole dish. Basically, I'm just gonna cut up some apples and some shallots and make a lemon vinaigrette with tarragon. Now you can, you can serve your monkfish with any kind of salad that you want. I would not suggest serving it with something too intense, uh, too rich because it's, it's very rich. You don't wanna have rich on rich. So I'm cutting sort of like Toothsome slices, not too thin, not too fat. I'm not gonna cut these into little pieces. I'm gonna leave them like that. I think that's kind of beautiful. I wouldn't make this too far in advance. I mean, you want it to meld maybe an hour in advance is tops. There's my apples. So I'm gonna quickly hit them with the lemon juice, because that's what's gonna keep them from browning. Lemon, juicer. Now they won't, probably won't brown. Okay, a little bit of shallot. I'm gonna cut this pretty fine. A Little bit of salt and put a cell, pepper. A little bit of washed tarragon which I'm going to roughly chop. This is a beautiful herb to go with fish. It's anise, or it has an anise flavor, and uh, it, mel it blends beautifully with, with fish. I'm just gonna roughly chop this. Okay, in we go. Very nice. I'm using rice vinegar. You don't have to, you can use white wine vinegar. Squirt of olive oil. I'm gonna now mix this up. So you're gonna use this, this, bot, this liquid, you're not gonna serve that. It's just a, the dressing so it stays nice while you're waiting. I'm gonna taste a piece. Mm. Oh, a little more salt. And that's done. So that's gonna go under our fish. Citrus vinaigrette. Okay, monkfish. What is monkfish? First of all, it's a fish that looks like Edward G. Robinson. And usually when you're buying, in fact, pretty much anytime you're buying monkfish around these parts, continentally, it's the tail. The great thing about the tail is it has a big backbone, but it doesn't have any tiny bones, which is why people love it. And basically tastes like lobster tail. So let's cook monkfish because most people don't cook monkfish. And the poor sucker looks like Edward G. Robinson. 
Monkfish, these are tail fillets. When I bought this fish, what do you think I did? And I'm just gonna make a very simple rub using some beautiful paprika, voila, quite a lot of salt, okay? A little bit of Chinese five spice powder. Ooh, spicy, five-like. And a little black pepper, okay? I'm just gonna coat it in this, and then I'm gonna fry it. About four minutes on one side, about two minutes on the other side. Okay, here we go. Coating, oh, it's beautiful. Coating, coating, coating. Wow, look at that. Coating is gorgeous. And now I'm going to heat up a very hot frying pan and fry it. Once this goes in, your potato should be almost done or being done at the same time. Fish needs to rest. It's a big ass piece of fish. It needs to calm down like a, like a large piece of meat. But your potato should be in swing at this point. All right, let's take it to the stage. Hot pan, olive oil. That's right. Ready? Now we just want this to be really hot. Presentation side down, meaning this side down. So you notice I lay it away from me so that um, it, doesn't, it doesn't splash in my face. It's a beautiful piece of fish, you know? And it gets, it gets maligned because it's, it's like Rah. Remember, the, mo the biggest mistake people make is fussing with it before it releases. This is already released because the pan is quite hot. So I'm basting a little before I turn it, that's fine. It's definitely, I think it's foreign too. Now this is quite dark because of the spices, but don't worry, okay? Don't worry. Now let this rest for as long as you can. In other words, without it getting stone cold. I put a little butter in at the end. Very, very gently foil the top of that. Okay, let's do the potatoes. <laughs> this is the hex-clad Conrad. They made a Conrad. I'm gonna fry them in butter and olive oil, okay? Crucify me. Uh, I, nobody said it was light. Ready? Here we go. Now, you're just coloring it. I mean, mine are cold. They should have been brought to room temperature before frying to chambray, but it's okay. So you wanna have a little cloth here for draining them. So now it's like a creamy, cheesy potato thing with potato chips on the outside. I'm not sure how you beat that. Now, if you're very adventurous, you can try the old side fry. Ah, side fry. Then you're gonna flip it over and take them out. Okay, here we go. Yes. Pretty, pretty good. <laughs> I just salt bait. <laughs> okay, let's do a little plating just for the hell of it. The halibut, I mean monkfish. <laughs> Here's our amazing salad that may have actually slightly benefited from sitting for a minute. I'm kind of draining it slightly, okay? I'm not heaping the, the liquid on. Be aware, think about what you would like. Do you want swimming liquid in the bottom of your fish dish? I'm presuming no. Perfectly rested monkfish. Now you could slice this for them. You can also let them slice it. So here you go. Beautiful monkfish with citrus uh, slaw, basically, with apples, green apples. Pave potatoes, hello. And don't forget, for dessert, you have a delightful trifle.
Once again, we want to thank you guys so much for watching Dinner Party tonight, for writing me these incredible messages and ideas and your own amazing uh, hacks and tips and stuff really are tremendously helpful. And if you have a second and you want to subscribe to Instagram or to the YouTube channel, it does help us create more content the more uh, notifying bells get hit. You could just take a minute to do that. That'd be fantastically great. Thank you so much for watching our show. Let's have a fabulous early spring dinner, and maybe the sparrows will deign to attend.